Hey guys, Sandor here. Thanks for joining me again. Uh, it's been a minute since I posted any videos or uploads on my garden. Uh, it's just been a super busy uh, summer with work. I got a new job and uh, just haven't had time, honestly, to uh, do any videos. Uh, any little time I have, I've been just watering the plants. Um, garden's been doing great. Uh, fall's here, so I need to do a video and show you guys uh, Higher protect my palms. That's what this video is about. I got a new greenhouse. Uh, I got rid of the lean-to. So yeah, why don't you guys come and join me? Uh, I'll show you what I have, uh, some new stuff, and uh, let's start protecting these palms. So yeah, today's uh, Saturday, October the 28th, 2023. Beautiful blue skies. We've uh, definitely cooled down somewhat. This uh, silver maple here has ch uh, literally just started changing colors like a day or two ago. You guys can see uh, I'm in southern Ontario, Laura here, zone 5B, 6A. A lot of the trees have already lost their leaves or are about to, but this silver maple somehow always uh, drops them sometime in about mid-November or late November. So yeah, but anyways, regardless, uh, nice... Uh, Cool day here, about, uh, let's check the temperature out like I usually do before we get started. Uh, so it's almost 10 and a half Celsius. Uh, so that's, uh, yeah, up, not really up there for this time of year, but it's about average for Southern Ontario. So uh, about 52 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Yesterday we were up in the low 70s, about 21 Celsius, 22 Celsius. So uh, just a um, change in weather and it's supposed to cool down a lot next week. So. Um, uh that's the reason why i'm going to get started on protecting these palms so anyways uh, i'm going to start off with the uh my amazon purchase here uh this is called a hoop greenhouse uh, before i get started on this quickly i'm going to throw up a video of my lean-to that i did last year so i'm going to do that now so you guys can see so uh this greenhouse like i said i got it from amazon it's uh it's, uh, I think it's uh, 10 feet long and seven feet high and uh, five feet wide. So um, I replaced uh, the lean-to. This was a lot easier for me to set up, take down um, all the wood and everything like that. Uh, unscrewing, screwing, stuff like that. It just makes my life easier. Um, if you guys come in here, I'm gonna show you. So not only do I have this cover, but I added an extra layer of uh, uh, tarp here inside and up top As you guys can tell I have these little stakes fiberglass stakes holding the top there Like that and then uh, this part of the cover fell down. It is kind of windy today um, But yeah, I, I do have some uh, extra insulation with plastic um, I'm not going to use any uh, uh, Incandescent c9 Christmas lights for the greenhouse this year. I'm just going to stick to uh, uh, greenhouse uh, heater here so this is 750 on low and 1000 watts on high i'm going to keep it at 750 it's going to be attached to a wi-fi thermostat so i can uh, uh check check the temperature in here and see how uh, uh things are doing uh during the winter so basically uh this is replacing the lean to i have so i got a lot of stuff going on in here so a lot of the stuff that i have in here uh, is is in the ground uh, as you guys can tell this is my back garden here so I have a, a needle palm back there so a lot of the stuff is in the ground and a lot of the stuff is uh, in pots as you guys can tell uh, it's my oleander uh, yucca that's in the ground um, I uh, made some changes in the garden this year right over there I uprooted these uh, two uh, trachycarpus palms uh, about five and six feet tall each of them that I got from James uh, Palms uh, a couple years back. Um, the reason why I took them out and put them back in the pots during the summer was is that I knew winter was coming and I just didn't have time to um, build extra boxes and worry about it. I got, I've got enough to protect and in my case less is more. So you know they hang around the pool and the pots, they look nice to track carpus and, and I'm fine with what I have to protect outside already. Um, I didn't want to get overwhelmed. I got lots, uh, a lot on my plate these days with work and stuff, like I said. So, again, a lot of the stuff is in the ground and some of it is in the pots. Um, so a hoop greenhouse, in my, from research, what I, I've learned is, is a lot better uh, than your standard greenhouse. Um, because of the snow, we get a lot of uh, 
lake effect snow here in southern Ontario and this is going to easily um, just drop the snow as, a, uh, as opposed to a lot of them where they uh, kind of, you know, sit a little bit and then these things are so flimsy anyways. This one has metal uh, poles in it and I did put a 2x2 two two up there just to reinforce it. I don't think I need it, but uh, just in case. But the hoop houses seem to do a lot better with uh, uh, heavy snow. And uh, I got it uh, pegged down here with rocks um, in the back too. I got got it staked down with rocks, pegged down with rocks. And uh, it should hold up, uh, fingers crossed. We'll see. The hoop house uh, is new. Uh, Lean 2 survived last year, so I... I did something right, but like I said, this is just a lot easier for me to put up and take down and now to ha have all that wood and screwing, unscrewing, all that kind of stuff. So um, this is it, and we'll, uh, we'll uh, revisit this greenhouse as the winter comes and see how it holds up. Uh, I think it's going to be fine. Like I said, I did reinforce it with uh, some extra tarps there. Even in the back there, there's a black tarp that uh, tracks this... Uh, South-facing uh, greenhouse tracks the sun here, um, gives a little more heat inside. So, uh, yeah, fingers crossed. We'll see how things do. And uh, so, going over here, see there. These are uh, three of the boxes that I built this year. Um, I used to use a TP method to protect my ponds, and now what I did is I uh, made my boxes and I got custom-made covers. Uh, from a place called Coverall. I'm going to leave the, the link down below for you guys if you're interested. Uh, I think they're all over uh, United States and Canada. Um, but yeah, basically, uh, this one I left open. Um, just open it up here, as you guys can tell. This one is uh, is uh, reflective double uh, bubble wrap um, in this one, insulated uh, on the inside and the outside and also I have a thermal blanket on the outside. Um, I believe this will be enough to protect uh, my Mediterranean fan palm which is uh, this is going over my Medi Mediterranean fan palm so this is three feet wide six feet high. Um, these custom covers that I ordered uh, have a zipper so during the winter when it gets too warm or we get nicer weather I can zip that up like I had it uh, and throw it over and have the sun uh, and the fresh air come into the uh, the structure here and also with these covers you do get a ventilation which is really nice so yeah covers all is a company I'll, again I'll send you that link so as you guys can see this one is uh, three feet by three feet by six uh, two by two feet uh, by nine feet that's going to be my tracky carpus and uh, for my Cordelline Australis, this is two, two feet by two feet by eight feet. So, uh, yeah, so these are, are done. They're going to be uh, put back into my garage in the spring. And then in the fall, I take them back out. I'm not going to go through constructing teepees and, and other boxes. Um, they take up a little bit of room, but you know what? It's just so much easier. Uh, Having uh, being prepared and, and not having to scramble before that bad weather hits here in Canada, southern Ontario, I should say more specifically, makes life a lot easier. So um, basically, these are uh, these are what I'm using to protect my plants. Um, and also, I when I pulled out these, uh, sorry guys, if I'm all over the board, just bear with me here. I got a lot to cover in this video, so uh, I really appreciate you guys. Uh, uh, watching um, so I did have my two trachycarpus uh, palms that I have in pots now I took these back out in uh, uh, I believe it was late July early August so uh, and then I planted some uh, Musa Baju here and uh, there was a insetti over here which is in the garage now I, I dug that up we did get one day of frost last week uh, it went down about 30 degrees 31 degrees um, so I had these Musa here uh, since end of July, early August, and they were probably, uh, that fence is about six and a half feet, probably another two feet. They were ab above about eight feet, so sorry I didn't have any video on that. They're, they really did well here, these Musa here. So what I'm going to do is protect these also. If I can show you guys in this video, I will. If not, uh, I'll, I'll show you in the next video. And I cut this last week after the frost. You guys can tell we're getting some growth on the Musa already. It's crazy how fast these things grow. So, uh, yeah, uh, the pups 
as you can see the pups got fried but even the bottom there is okay anyways these are going to be covered uh i got a whole bunch of stuff to cover this um like i said i'll try to get into this video if not i'll make a quick video uh later on about how i protect my musa and upload that but anyways we're gonna concentrate on the palm trees and uh i'm gonna these aren't very heavy but uh, I may get my wife to help me here, but I'm going to put them over my uh, palms that I have in the garden here. And then I'll show you guys how I secure them down and what I use to heat them. So, yeah, just bear with me. Okay, yeah, before I, I put the, uh, the structures over the palms, I just wanted to show you guys. This is uh, my trachycarpus here, about eight feet. And that's my Camerops humilis here, Mediterranean fan palms. So this is how they look pre uh tying up i'm going to tie up the fronds uh just kind of secure everything and uh same with my cordial line down there so i just wanted to give you guys uh kind of a before uh how they look and i'm going to tie them uh down and show you guys that part i do have some supplies here you're going to need a, a exacto knife some string uh gloves and uh snippers so uh a few things here to just secure these palm fronds down and uh before i put the structures over all right guys so uh this is what it looks like when uh the palms are tied back so let's uh focus on the tracky carpets here you can see the twine there carefully tied back uh the petioles there and then after i was done that i uh put a string, uh, two strings of C9 Christmas lights. So the incandescent ones, not the LED ones, because you want to emit uh, hot air. Uh, so yeah, make sure they're uh, the old fashioned incandescent uh, Christmas lights. So there's uh, 25 on each strand, that's 50 total. Uh, I believe the bulbs are seven watts each. So um, that'll, get, that'll emit a, quite a bit of heat uh, like it did last year. So uh, that is the Trachycarpus palm, and uh, you can see the Camerops humilis, the Mediterranean fan palm, is even more com uh, compact uh, uh, now than it was uh, with the before picture. So again, um, this one, you got to be careful. Look at the spines on those uh, uh, petioles there. So they're like a uh, little serrated skin. So... Um, I had a friend of mine, Joe, in Windsor, Ontario, send me um, something that he uses, uh, gloves, and for your forearms, they're kind of like uh, uh, covers for your forearms, gloves, uh, and they, uh, these kind of needles won't penetrate that glove. i got to put, uh, put a picture of that up for you guys, actually, uh, right now, give you an idea what, what it's, uh, what I'm talking about. So yeah, there you go. That's, uh, my friend Joe suggested that uh, he's... He's a palm grower down in Windsor, Ontario, and uh, I think it's a great idea. I just usually use gloves, um, but uh, never thought of, of something that's uh, a little less penetrable when it comes to those uh, barbs on those petioles. Yeah, they're just crazy. I did get uh, caught a couple of times, even while I was uh, careful and had my gloves on. But anyways, um, I digress. This is, uh, again, how it looks now that I've tied the fronds back. So it's nice and compact. Same with the tracky carpus there. Again, there's uh, 50 light bulbs on there, two strands of uh, C9 incandescent Christmas light bulbs. Yeah, I just want to stress that, not the LED ones. And uh, over here, the uh, Cordyline Australis. So it looks like a giant broom, doesn't it? Um, yeah, same thing, two strands, uh, total 50 bulbs on there. So, uh, yeah, everything is set now to put the covers over. And then I will uh, set up the uh, thermostats, the Wi-Fi adjustable thermostats on there. So, yeah, that's how they look, guys. And close up the uh, greenhouse there. It is starting to get a little dark right now. It's, uh, I believe it's uh, 5.30 p.m. So, um, yeah continue this video and uh, put the boxes up all right guys so this is the next day I ran out of light yesterday I was trying to get things done while I was uh, getting these uh, boxes up and prepping everything so um, but all in all it didn't take me very long like I said these boxes were uh, already made 
Um, so I'm just going to go through everything I did quickly. Um, so as you guys can tell, um, before I get started, I did build these borders, uh, four by fours around the base of the, um, the ponds for all of them, uh, during the summer. So I knew I wanted uh, two by two dimensions. So when I put up these, uh, structures here, these boxes, I, uh, they would fit on there perfectly. So, um, and, and you know what, they're good to have too, because when you're watering your palms, it kind of funnels uh, down into the palm more rather than dissipating the water. So there's, there's a benefit to those too. And it, aesthetically, it looks good too. So um, I forgot to mention that before. So yeah, I put the structures on. I screwed them in four different uh, sides uh, just to give it some stability. And the main thing that you want to do is put these uh, cross beams on, two by twos against the trunk of the palm so if there's uh, gusty winds like i'm pushing this really hard right now with all my weight and it's not going anywhere so unless we get a hurricane blow through here <laughs> we uh we're gonna be fine um so yeah these uh cross structures are really important when you're putting up these boxes uh without that uh you could run into some trouble with the boxes just uh tipping over even though i do have them screwed down so uh I have, because this is so uh, tall, I have one up there too, uh, just to give it extra support. So uh, same with the uh, Mediterranean fan palm here. Uh, again, just uh, cross beams here, supports. And um, again, I screwed these down into, into this uh, uh, border that I built the, with the 4x4s four there. So it's all screwed down in there, and uh, it's pretty... Uh, solid there so and as you guys can tell i have my temperature controller set up there uh so this brand is called uh ink bird so uh basically i have it set so anything below four these uh c9 incandescent christmas lights will uh, kick on automatically until it hits uh seven degrees so celsius so uh this is canada so we're using uh the metric uh system here so uh seven celsius um there is the uh, probe to uh, measure the temperature inside the enclosure. You probably want to keep this a little bit lower down. Um, warm air rises, so uh, if you have it up higher, you're not necessarily going to get a true reading. Better to keep it, uh, it lower in the box. Um, so yeah, those those will kick on anything below four Celsius. Um, I tested it; everything works well. Um, I will also leave a link for you guys if you're interested in these. Uh, they're, they're a lot better than, uh, if you, let's put it this way, if you're going to invest a lot of money and, and try to keep your uh, palm trees alive in colder climates, um, don't go with cheap uh, uh, things or um, temperature controllers like Thermo, uh, Thermo Cube. I'm going to uh, throw a picture of that up right now. I used, uh, I used this uh, way back when I lived in Toronto. And I had two fail on me, and I heard other guys. Some people have good luck with them. Uh, I've heard other people uh, had issues with them, with them failing. I've had two fail. I have another one in the house, but it's only for backup if anything does help. But um, again, if you're going to invest in uh, protecting your palm trees, uh, they're expensive, and you know <laughs> you don't want them uh, that investment to go out the window by cheaping out um, on a. Temperature, uh, temperature controller like a thermal cube. So I highly recommend someone like this. Um, they work great. I have no issues with them so far. They get really good ratings on Amazon. Uh, most people uh, really do like them. Uh, like I said, this is the Wi-Fi uh, one. There's one without the Wi-Fi, but this way I can um, check on my phone. Uh, I'll get alert, an alarm if the temperature goes down. Like let's say we lose power. I'll get an alert on my phone saying that uh, the temperature is below, uh, I think I have it set to minus, minus three, the alarm goes on. So that way I know exactly, uh, or I'll know exactly if there's something wrong. So yeah. Um, so yeah, these two boxes here again, um, they got uh, double-sided bubble wrap and then I got uh, thermal blanket, uh, double-sided bubble wrap uh, again thermal blanket up higher on this one it couldn't bring it all the way down here but that's fine that should be enough uh insulation there um a lot of people use styrofoam i'm going to show you my uh quarter line there where i did use styrofoam um but uh either way they're both good um 
if you want to go a little heavier on your insulation, depending where you are in the in the country. Um, here our winters don't get too severe, but it's not uncommon for us to uh, drop to minus 20 Celsius the odd day during the winter. Um, so yeah, you want to make sure that you do have enough insulation uh, where, wherever that is that you live, just to be on the safe side. Um, but these should be fine. So yeah, those are the boxes there for the Trachycarpus and the uh, Camerops Humulus. So um, they're both in there. Power is set, everything's set. Uh, greenhouse, I have everything hooked up there too. I showed you guys yesterday, I have a greenhouse heater for that. I'm not using the incandescent light bulbs. Um, so this is the Cordelline Australis. As you guys can tell, I used uh, styrofoam insulation on this one. Um, I uh, just had some left over in my garage, um, so I thought I might as well uh, use that. I do have uh, bubble wrap on the outside of it, so I, you know, I do have double insulation somewhat. And uh, got a thermal blanket up there. Uh, you guys can tell it doesn't cover the whole thing, but again, warm air rises, so that'll just uh, help trap in uh, the warmer air up top. And um, yeah, so this one is constructed... Uh, with also some two by fours, so it's not all two by twos. Uh, like those two structures, they're all they're all two by twos. This one I had some uh, two by four uh, that I had uh, lying around, so I used that. Uh, but the main structure is uh, two by two with some uh, two by fours. And again, I got these uh, custom made covers uh, from Covers and All, so I will leave a link for that, and also for the Inkbird. Uh, temperature controller Wi-Fi temperature controller uh, so you guys if you're interested you could uh, check that out and uh, see if you want to do something like that if not this year then uh, next year so uh, so yeah that's it guys um, I'm going to uh, do quickly do my bananas if you guys are interested um, it's just another couple minutes to add to this video right now um, just going to head over there and show you guys quickly how I protect uh, my Musa Bazu and uh, we'll get that started right now but that's the, that's the enclosures there oh yeah and again I have cross beams there too to uh, help support so all right so we're here at the bananas here the Musa Bazu and um, pretty simple I'm going to cover them so this is all um, frost cloth. So this is going to be going in the tub in those. And then I'm going to line it with a tarp. When this uh, silver maple decides to drop all its leaves, what I'm going to do is uh, take the top off, pile all the leaves onto the these uh, tubs here, and then put the tarp back on again. So it just gives it extra insulation. So uh, yeah, I'm going to do that now. So I'm just going to cover... Uh, slowly these uh, musa and then put the tubs over so as you guys can tell i'm using these frost cloths uh, to wrap up the bananas so i left one out um, so i'm just going to keep wrapping them and again just going to put the tub over each one of these so i uh, just wanted to show you guys how that's coming along okay so there's one on so you guys understand what i'm doing here so i just uh Put that cover make sure there's a lot of um, this frost cloth on and uh, I'll do that to the other two there so that's how it looks so far all right so that's how they look with the tubs on so um, many ways you guys can do this uh, I have these tubs uh, if you have garbage cans um, you could use those uh, I had a bunch of frost cloth so I, I used that um, you could use straw. I know people use straw. They use leaves. They fill up garbage bags with leaves and then kind of just, uh, you know, place it onto the stock. Um, yeah, so there are many ways you can do this. Um, the point is, is that the main thing is, is that uh, if you live in a colder climate like I do here in uh, 5B, 6A, Southern Ontario, you want to make sure that, uh, in this case, the more, more protection is, is, uh, is better. So more is better. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to put that, uh, tarp on. I'm going to have to get a bigger tarp. Um, didn't realize that I pulled out my small one, but, um, I'm just going to put that over. And then, like I said, when this, uh, silver maple falls, I'm just going to dissipate the leaves 
uh, in and around these tubs uh, as much as I can and then uh, cover it with maybe another tarp, tarp or two. But uh, this is basically the, the start of the, the protection here. So yeah, uh, throw that uh, tarp on now and then uh, weigh that down and then uh, pretty much done. All right, so it is done. And uh, I'm sure you guys get the idea right now. I'm gonna have to get a bigger tarp, like I said. Uh, weighed it down and uh, like I said, pile some uh, leaves inside more. Uh, around it and uh, just to give it some more insulation and then when the snow falls uh, you can always just dump a bunch of snow on there too which is snow is probably one of the best things to use if you guys get it uh, for insulation so uh, yeah hopefully we don't get the snow but uh, that's inevitable it, it does happen here in southern Ontario but yeah that's it guys and again all the structures are done and if you have any questions or comments please leave them I'll try to answer whatever you guys uh, ask. Um, hopefully this helps out some of you guys who are thinking of doing this, if not this year, the next year. Um, this is my third year now um, protecting these guys. So uh, like I said, I use the TP method uh, um, every year. Um, it, it worked fine, but thing was is that I had to take it apart and uh, it's, it's just a hassle. So having the boxes ready, um, putting them in the garage when you're done, taking them out, everything is set, just makes uh, things a lot easier. If you have the room, I understand some people don't, um, you know, uh, do, do what's best for you basically. Um, but this is how I do it. And uh, again, I have these covers so uh, on there. So uh, yeah, fingers crossed. Let's see how this winter goes. And uh, for, uh, for the rest of you guys, I hope you guys had a great weekend and um, yeah, looking forward to a, a nice winter and uh, hopefully uh, we won't get bombarded with snow here in Southern Ontario. So again, guys, thanks for watching. Again, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them. Uh, I'll get back to you on that. And uh, again, thanks for watching. Cheers.